Hello YouTube, um, welcome to my fourth tutorial, uh, which is going to be a very quick, um, not even a tutorial, but a little insight into a new feature of Lightroom 6 or Lightroom Creative Cloud that has just been recently announced by Adobe um, end of last, or well, actually mid of this week. Um, there are a couple of other new features that uh, would set apart Lightroom 6 from Lightroom 5 uh, that I'm not going to go through in detail, but maybe at a later stage in, in other tutorials. But today I really only wanted to focus on, on one feature and that is the new filter brush option because I think it's very helpful and it that's one of the reasons why I will actually upgrade to Lightroom 6. I've only downloaded a test version for now just to see how it's going to work, but um, that's going to be the one that will probably be the decisive um, factor in upgrading to Lightroom 6. Other new features in Lightroom 6 that I find interesting um, are things like um, a better performance. When you have a discrete graphics card or another powerful graphics card on your computer and you have, a, for instance, a high-res monitor like 4K, like I do, you will experience um, smoother processing and um, faster browsing through the gr grid view, for instance, which I enjoyed really uh, only by using the program maybe for one or two hours until now. But I found it much smoother than before, even when using things like the, um, the healing tool or the clone tool. Um, I found that the uh, changes when going from one healing spot to the next uh, are much, much quicker. Um, in the previous version, when I had a large file, um, for instance, coming out of a Nikon D800, which is like 40 megabytes in size, and then on the large screen, uh, the 4K monitor that I have, there was a considerable uh, latency uh, when you moved from one um, healing spot to the next, but that's that's almost gone. So that makes it much faster when you're working with this tool. And uh, when you think about like removing, um, well, not freckles, but um, spots from a from a face that don't belong there, it can be a couple. So that that's a, a, a speedy improvement. Um, Another uh, or other new features include uh, a panoramic stitching um, functionality um, that was previously only reserved in Photoshop or you could only do it in Photoshop. So it would mean another step. You would have to leave Lightroom and go to Photoshop to do the panoramic stitching or merging, uh, if you will. The same is true for HDR merging. Um, that is also being included now in Lightroom that many of you might find useful. I'm not a big fan of HDR in, in general. In some instances, it, it may work. Um, I'm a big believer of when you don't see that it's an HDR image. I think it's then it's a good example. If you can tell it's HDR, I think it's uh, it's overdone and it's overused. And that's why I'm not a big, big fan of it. But Lightroom 6 now has it has it in it. Another useful um, new addition to some of you may be the facial recognition function. I don't think I'm going to use it that much just because I'm not a big family photographer. Uh, I do take photos of uh, my friends, of course, but I, I know them, I know who they are. <laughs> so I don't really see a need for facial recognition. Other than that, being a street photographer primarily, I take pictures of people that are different all the time. So the facial recognition is probably not something that, that I will be using. Um, Another feature that's new is that you can uh, create video slideshows now that include still images. So you can have like a Ken Burns effect, music and, and other effects. So it will even change pictures according to the music that you're using. Again, nothing really for me because I'm not building slideshows with Lightroom, but it might be interesting for you. And finally, you can um, also now create uh, web galleries using uh, HTML5 code. Um, previously, I think it was really static and it didn't really include any of the, the modern um, web features, but with HTML5 now it does, so they may look more modern. But again, um, not really a feature that's that's good for me, but you may, may care for it. With that said, uh, let's dive into what I really want to talk about today. Uh, and that is really to show you an example of uh, how you can use the filter brush. And in order to do that, um, let me just quickly reset the picture to its original 
um, state, so without any edits. Um, the filter brush works in, in two of the filters actually in Lightroom 6 and that is the radial filter or the graduated filter. Uh, I've explained those, uh, at least the radial filter in another video of mine. Uh, so check out my YouTube channel to see a quick tutorial on the radial filter. And for this um, quick tutorial I'm going to only use the, the radial filter again on the face of the two ladies to let them pop out a little bit and let the background fade into dark because I do not want to have the focus in the in the background of the picture. So let me quickly crop the picture to a, a size that um, doesn't take away too much from the focus of the image. Um, the next thing I usually do is adjust the exposure so that the main objects in a, in a picture like the faces in, in this specific case are um, correctly exposed. So I've increased it just a little bit uh, to make them a little bit brighter uh, and already reduced the, <coughs> the blacks a little bit to add a little contrast and a little punch and go up with the whites a little bit to make the um, faces stand out a little bit more and even the skin tones on the, on the hands. And maybe, well, let's see if we yeah, I can go back with the shadows a little bit and the highlights so the faces don't um, smear into pure white. Uh, we don't want that. Let's go a little bit, but we still have a little bit of room to play here up there. And again, uh, for these basic adjustments, um, check out my first Lightroom tutorial that was specific for the Leica M monochrome, but uh, really uh, you can s use the same techniques um, in any other image, of course, they work best in, in monochrome image images. And let me add a little bit more contrast here in the gradation curve. So that already looks um, pleasing. And now we add the uh, radial filter. Uh, and the way we do it, we draw the circle around her face. So let's start with her with the with her face on the left hand side. Let's bring it in the right position. And then Again, um, how it really works, you can check out in my other tutorial. Uh, we reduce the exposure basically in any ad other area, but in the in within the circle. So anything else but her face is going to be um, darker. And let me exaggerate it a little bit so that you see um, that we can then apply the the filter brush accordingly. So the the problem, as you can already see, is yes, the, the faces um, is, is white, that's all nice, but uh, there are areas in her face that should actually even be a little bit lighter because within the radial filter it's already applying, that's why it's called radial filter, a radial uh, graduation <coughs> from very light to darker. Um, the way you can show that is you press the O key and then it shows where it has actually applied the reduced exposure that we have um, defined on the right hand column. And even the very faint red parts of her face, um, that already gets toned down and the, the exposure is going to be smaller than we actually want it to be. And the nice thing about the filter brush, which you activate by pressing on brush, or you can switch it with shift T between edit and brush. So I'm not doing anything, I'm pressing shift T now. When you have selected the brush, um, you can either, and that's the way um, I've started using this, this filter, either press the alt key for erasing it, or you just click on erase here in the right hand column. And you take away the, the basically the, the color <laughs> where it has applied already the reduced exposure from her face because we really want to have her face and even um, her neck um, a little bit lighter and not fading into the dark background. And when I'm going to take away the, um, the overlay by pressing O again, you can already see um, the side of her face is getting lighter as it should be because we really want to have her face but of course not the, the background um, being um, lighter, brighter. But previously in Lightroom 5, you couldn't do that. Um, you only were able to apply um, the full radial filter on the 
full area um, of that circle that you have drawn. Um, and just for the purpose of this quick tutorial, I also show you how you can do that with the graduated filter. It's the same, same technique, basically. So let's um, accept this one. Uh, let's close it. And let's use a radial filter um, just from the, let's say from the top. And let's see if we can further reduce exposure. Let's take it a little bit further down. And we reduce exposure even more. Let's put it on exposure and reduce it like this. And I'm really overdoing it now, but only to show you the effect of the, um, the filter brush, also in the graduated filter. And then again, you go on either brush or press um, Shift T. And again, you can start taking away the effect of the filter by just brushing over it with the Alt key or again, you press erase on the right-hand column. And already you get the very nice looking graduated filter from the top, um, but you bring back um, the brightness in, in her face, which is really what you wanted to achieve. And let me go back to the, the version in the beginning um, to show you the um, final picture that I had created just to give you uh, an an impression of how I did it in the end. So that's the final picture um, that I have done. And basically I applied the radial filter to um, the, the two faces. And then as I've just shown you with the um, filter brush, I've taken away um, all the, the areas that were too dark in, in their faces. And the same for the hands, because yes, I used a radial filter, but of course I want only the um, the hands being um, brighter, but of course not the rest, like the paper and her arm and all this, and the same of course for here. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this quick insight into Lightroom 6 um, or Lightroom CC. If you go for the subscription model, I hope you found this tutorial um, useful, although it was a very quick one, but I wanted to give you a quick insight into at least one new feature of Lightroom 6. I'm certain I will follow up with uh, more tutor tutorials on um, other features that have been added to Lightroom 6 compared to Lightroom 5. And of course, if you want to stay updated on my channel, subscribe to my channel and we'll see you in the future. Thank you and goodbye.